today we're going to investigate a possible wheel bearing issue he's having. He hears a kind of a squeal or screeching noise when driving. Uh, so we're going to jack this up here and see what we can figure out if it's wheel bearing or, or what's going on with it. Uh, he did put a new, uh, retighten the wheel bearing, make sure everything was tight, but it still wasn't. He said we're still having problems with it, so we'll see what's going on. Okay, the problem is not wheel bearing related. The problem is brake related. So I can spin the wheel a little bit here. It's pretty stiff. We'll still get in there and look at the wheel bearings. When I try to pull it back the other way, it literally doesn't want to move. I'm giving it a ton of force, and you can hear that noise. I assume that's the noise that he hears when he's driving it. Ugh. Now, look at his brakes. So get in here and look at the shoe at the bottom. Look how much clearance there is on that. I could stick my finger between it. So when I go one way, it's fine, and then it's catching on the back corner over there. So is it... Is it just the adjustment is 100% out on the slack adjuster? Turned the wrong way? I don't know. I've never seen one that bad. Um, the, the good news is the brake linings look like they're new. Uh, so let's get in here with an adjustment, adjust the slack adjusters and see if that's all the problem is. But you can see the top and bottom. Crazy. Okay, so I figured out what's wrong with the brakes. The pins that hold the two clamshells together, all of that hardware is missing. So there's nothing at the rear side to attach it to. So everything's just free floating in here. And you can see straight through. So if you look here, the anchor pins that go through here and hold the shoes together are completely missing. All the hardware, the retainer, everything, front and back side, it's all gone. I've never seen them just fall out. They're actually usually kind of hard to remove, so. I'm surprised to see them missing. They've been missing for a long time. You can tell by all the gunk in there. So the, these brakes have been inoperable for, for quite a while. So that's kind of a shocker. So that, that should be a readily available regular part. I don't think this is like a bus specific thing. This should just be the same as a truck. So we'll pull up the part number tomorrow and maybe like Fleet Pride or somebody like that will have carry stuff like that. Otherwise, Luke at US Coach, I'm sure, will have them too. But I'd like to have them tomorrow and get them on tomorrow and be able to get them same day instead of have to wait for next day stuff. Driving down the road, one of the bearing caps came out. So then the U-joint cocked in here sideways, but it stayed attached. So the drive shaft didn't fall off. It wedged itself in there. And how far did you drive it with that? Like Over 100 miles. 100 miles at how fast? Uh, about 55. 55 miles an hour <laughs> with no U-joint. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then he was able to do a roadside repair, getting a new U-joint, and just had to beat the cap in. You can see how worn everything is. Um, so we're replacing this all now and, and fixing it right. Uh, getting this nut off is always a problem. So I've got the oxyacetylene out, and we're going to heat it up. It, it won't budge. It's rusted on. And it's like 700 foot-pounds to begin with. And then when you wait 50 years, it probably hasn't been off in 50 years. It would be a, a very good guess. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so we got that off of the pinion. Uh, they took it to a shop. I couldn't get it. I was heating it up, and there's just too much torque. I don't have a one-inch gun here with the, me on the bus. So uh, they ran it over to a buddy that had it, and, and he got the nut off. Uh, the uh, So the old one, the they lost a bearing cap. So the bearing cap came out, and then that allowed this to just wedge it popped out and wedged in between there and got stuck and then he drove it a hundred miles at 55 miles an hour with that just wedged in there like that I don't know how it didn't fall apart and break he said it had a hell of a vibration up to about 30 miles an hour and then after that it got fine <laughs> so that's just insane but obviously it's severely damaged wall it out so we got a new one to go on I'm a little concerned about where the oil seal is going to ride on the new one we're going to clean it up as best we can and hopefully it won't leak so that's tomorrow's job we do have a new drive shaft if we need it but I don't think we need it the drive shaft doesn't appear to be damaged at all um, I gotta show you something else that I got too. This is from Sheldon. 
and uh, I'm going to give a link to his company in the description. But he sent me a low profile jack. This thing is super low profile. And it's a 20 ton air over hydraulic. I used it today for the first time. It's amazing. Um, titanium hydraulics in Hollandale, Florida, I believe is where it is. Um, I said I'll leave a link to his, his business on there, but he sent me this. I don't know if I've got one of my other jacks readily available here. It's, it's at least half the height of my other low profile jack. So it's under six inches tall. It's about five and three quarters. And then he was tired of watching me struggle. He also sent me these jacking blocks, which are rated, I forgot what he said, but super high, higher than what I'll ever use. And they only weigh like a pound each, um, but super high strength. And again, they're about an inch thick. So I can put them under the jacks and I'll let you know. I haven't used those yet on soft ground, but we'll see how that goes. But if it's anything like what he says, and I believe him, it was a crazy number. I maybe said like 10 tons or something. So thank you, Sheldon, for that. And he sent me another jack. I don't have it yet. Um, I just, my friend Sean picked them up and, and shipped them to me from him. But that's an awesome low profile jack. I love it. It was great today.